all about wildlife, and there's four artists involved. We have Brian Matthews, we have Jeff Hoff, we have Brad Bowl, and we have Jennifer Matthews, who will be here for our first Facebook Live event in the gallery. She's going to be talking about her work. And I want just a little bit about the gallery. We're open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 5 and Saturdays from 10 to 2. And we're open late on Thursday evenings during our downtown arts market. And we're funded by the North Dakota Council on the Arts. Welcome and let's listen to Jennifer. <laughs> Over here, all right. So this is another oil painting. I think all the paintings I'm showing today are actually oil paintings um, of some beautiful white roses. And this is a good example of how sometimes I paint something just for the absolute beauty of it. And uh, for this painting, I got the reference photos at the Rose Garden at the Dakota Zoo in Bismarck. And what I loved about the photos is that they just really reminded me of antique prints of flowers. And the other thing I really liked is, um, I really like painting with the color white. White is a very interesting color to paint because when you look at it, there's actually very little white in it. It's a very reflective color. So what you're really seeing is all the colors it's reflecting. Um, for these roses, they had a really beautiful glow from within. 
which is where I came up with the name Luminance. I just felt like they were almost glowing. But when you look at the petals, you can see that they are, you know, really green and pink and blue and all different colors that, you know, come together as the color white when you're walking by. Um, the other thing I did with this painting was intentionally use a bigger brush than I normally use. Um, I paint a lot of feathers and fur and it requires a very tiny brushes and a lot of tiny brush strokes, very repetitive. And I didn't want to lose the softness of the petals on this one. So using that bigger brush kept me from even being able to add in the details I normally do. And so I think it, it really stayed nice and soft that way. All right, so we're gonna move over here. So with these two pieces, um, one is a photograph by my husband, Brian. The other is an oil painting by me. And what we wanted to do was to show the way two artists collaborate together and also the way two different people have two very different perspectives on the same subject. Uh, Brian and I spend a lot of time doing photography together. It's, it's kind of our hobby. Um, this summer has been very unusual because we haven't really been able to travel very far, but we've still been finding a lot of local little dams and lakes to go to to work on our photography but normally we go to a lot of state parks and some national parks um, but for this one we got these brian took this photo at the dakota zoo um, he chose to turn his piece of artwork into a black and white photo because it really showcased the texture of both the snow and the fur of the fox and what I saw when I saw the photo was the beautiful, vibrant red fur of the fox. So I intentionally zoomed in closer to create a more intimate feeling work of art and really showcased that really pretty red fur. All right, we are gonna move over, over here. So this painting has a lot of personal meaning for me. Um, it's, it came from um, an incident that happened in Bismarck about a year and a half ago. Um, it was January 2019, and there were multiple sightings of mountain lion tracks around the city. And finally one morning, they caught a mountain lion within the city limits and he was euthanized. Um, and even though I completely understand that for safety, you know, for everyone, it was what needed to happen, it really made me really sad. And so I really wanted to paint a picture of this mountain lion um, to help me remember him. Um, last summer, I did an artist residency at Lake Metagoshi State Park, and I found out um, some of the history behind this mountain lion. He was trapped originally in Adams County, so he actually had a tracking um, band on, and um, they did DNA testing on him, and he was from South Dakota. And um, they actually, he did not go to waste. His pelt was kept at Lake Metagoshi State Park to use for educational purposes. And I can't remember what everything else was, but I think another state park possibly got his skull um, and I, I think it's possible some other parts were even donated for education. Um, so for me, um, it's just a really good reminder of how important it is to have state and national parks and things like national wildlife refuges so that these animals have a safe place to live. Um, they said they thought he was following his natural migration path along the river and we just got in his way. And that is how I came up with the title, Just Passing Through. And I even intentionally kept this painting a little farther away from him and did not do a close-up portrait like I frequently do because I wanted to get that feeling like he was just trying to, to get through and really wanted nothing to do with us. So that's where that one came from. Now we have one more we're gonna come look at. This is one of my bigger projects. 
And this one is a good example of how sometimes my paintings come from having a certain feeling. Um, and when I was trying to pick my next painting out for this, I was at a point in life where I was feeling a lot of frustration and just more aggressive feelings, which thankfully is not how I normally am. Normally I'm pretty peaceful, but um, I really wanted to find something that helped show those feelings better. And so I used another photographer's reference photo for this. And this is a good example of um, how I use the computer to manipulate my images before I start a painting. Because I took this photo and really manipulated the birds to be even more aggressive than they were in the photo. I wanted one to seem very submissive and the other to seem very dominant. And even in the title, Take a Bow, you know, I'm not asking you to, I'm telling you to. So even in the title, it is more aggressive. Um, the other thing I did with this painting was completely change the background. Uh, in the reference photo, everything about it was green, green grass, green reeds, green everything. And I wanted to keep the painting very, um, with a very limited color palette so that it wouldn't take away the focus from the birds. And I even really exaggerated the purples and the feathers on this just to create more drama. Um, so this, this was one of my bigger projects, but it was, it was good to do. Um, painting birds is a very intense thing to do. Um, when you paint feathers, there's a lot of forgiveness in the way that the fur goes. You paint all those little strands of fur, and the more you let go, the more realistic it can look. But when you're painting a feather, it has to be exactly right. There's no forgiveness. There's an exact pattern. It's very mathematical. Um, people ask me a lot if it's, you know, very relaxing to paint. And there are times where it is relaxing to paint. Um, maybe I'm just doing an underpainting, that first layer on something. I don't have to think that hard about it. But when it comes down to painting something detailed like these big birds, um, it's actually very, very intense. It's hours and hours and hours and layer after layer, multiple layers of paint. It's like repainting the whole painting over and over and over until it's complete. Um, so it's actually a very intense process uh, to paint something like that. So. so those were the main paintings I wanted to show you today. Um, I also want to say, uh, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you can find me at Jennifer Matthews Nature Art. And you can also find my entire portfolio along with all of my upcoming shows on my website. And that is www.jennifermatthewsnatureart.com. Um, the show here will be up until August 29th, so please stop by and see it. And since this is live, did we happen to get any questions coming through? No? Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate your support in the arts.